Hello, Bilosh Kavava here with another MTG video. Bring new MTG video content every two days. So if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, why not subscribe to the channel? Because I'm doing this every two days and I'm loving the engagement and the communication I'm getting with people on YouTube with Magic the Gathering. It's fantastic. So if you like it, why not subscribe? Because I'm doing this every two days. And today, what am I talking about? Well, today I want to talk about the reserved list. If you're a Magic player, you know what the reserved list is, and you probably fall into one of two camps. There are two people, when you talk about the reserved list, there are two people in the Magic the Gathering community. Well, maybe three, but two major ones. You got the ones that love the reserved list, that think it's a fantastic idea, that want it to expand it, that want it to keep it going. And you got the people who say that it's the worst thing that ever happened to the game of Magic. They don't like it because it keeps cards too expensive and they can't play the format, which those cards are legal in. And I see it as a two-sided thing. And this comes back down to the, vi the last video I did on Bazaar of Bad Dad and how Rudy from Alpha Investment was able to spike the card up $1,200, $1,025 USD. He managed to spike that card up that much to over two grand. And it comes down to how was he able to do that? Well, he was able to do that with having a YouTube presence, having people know that he has money, that he can do that, and because of the supply. And that's the biggest problem with the reserve list, is as it gets older and older, the cards get more and more expensive. And it comes down to one major question. One major question that every Magic, anyone involved with Magic the Gathering, has to ask themselves. Is Magic... Is it a player's game or is it an investment game? That's the question that all players, everyone in Magic the Gathering should ask themselves. If you look at Wizards, Wizards of the Coast right now, they would say it's a player's game. Because the way they are overprinting cards, they want to drive them down. They're doing a lot of reprints, Modern Masters, Eternal Masters, all these master sets. They're hitting cards in the modern format constantly. Iconic Masters, another example. Because they want to make the cards cheaper so more people can buy it. And they also want to make money. Because Eternal Masters and these kind of sets sell well. So that's what they want to do. Iconic Masters didn't sell very well. But that's what they want to do. They want to sell sets. And they want to drive the prices down so more people can play cards. And more people can play modern. More people can buy the cards because the cards are cheaper. Should Wizards even care about old magic? Should they care about that? Should they care about 93, 94, Magic, Vintage, Legacy? Should they even care about that? Sure, if they got rid of the reserved list, they could print those cards, make a lot of money, make like a reserved masters, and just make a whole lot of money. But do they even care about that? Don't they just want... They make their money from Standard. They make their money from Standard and selling iconic masters and stuff like that, modern masters, from the modern format. So, do they even care about Vintage and Legacy? I'm just asking that question right now. I'm asking, should they even care about Vintage and Legacy and 93, 94 Magic? Should they even care about that? Because their money is in Standard. That's where their money is, selling new booster boxes. And I can see the two sides of the coin. You want your cards to be worth something. If your cards all are worth 15 cents, let's say all cards were worth 15 cents, then why would you even collect them? You could say, well, you collect them because you want to play the game. But another person could say, well, I'm a collector. I will just go out and collect rocks. Now, no offense to rock collectors, but people don't buy magic cards because they're worth rocks. They buy it because they think they have value. So I can see you have to have value in the cards. But I can see people almost saying, well, the price is just too high. And I agree with that. They are extremely high, but I don't think Wizards could ever remove the reserve list without causing such a massive ripple that it could drive the game into a freefall. It could absolutely drive the game into a catastrophic freefall that could almost end the game. Now, I don't think anything can end the game of Magic. I think the game of Magic is always here. I think it's been here 25 years and it will continue for another 25 years. Maybe digital, maybe online, who knows, but it will continue. But it would be a catastrophic failure in the game and people would, all these investors would just back out. And I know as a player you would think that's fantastic, but the amount of printing, your cards would go down to nothing. You would have no value. 
And I guess the other question some people ask, and I'm just throwing out questions, so post down in the comment sections what you think, give me your thoughts on these questions. But some people, I've talked to people and they say, why do cards need to go up in value? Why do they? If you bought, let's say, a Nintendo Wii back in 2009, 2008, you bought it for, let's say, what was it, $200, $300? Well, now you'd be lucky to sell it for $25. And I know that's an electronic and that doesn't really compare to collectible cards, but some people see it as like that. They say, they think, well, I bought the card for, let's say, 40 bucks or 30 bucks. I played with it. I enjoyed it. Now it's only worth $15. Well, too bad. That was the price that I paid to enjoy the card. I can see that point of view. Maybe that's a different topic for a different video, but I could see that point of view where people would say, well, cards aren't supposed to go up. But then as a collector collectible card game, people want the cards to have some value. People want the cards to go up. And I can see that the reserved list, I think it's terrible to add cards to the reserved list. Because if you add a random card that, let's say it's jank, no one cares about it. But in 20 years time, that random janky card might be worth 100 bucks, 200 bucks. If that random janking card one day finds a way into, let's say, a top modern deck, top vintage deck, then that card might go up to $1,000. And we don't need other $1,000 cards. That being said, I think the reserve list is here to stay. And as players, it prohibits people from playing vintage. It prohibits people from buying legacy. But that's just the cost it is now. I think there's no actual way to stop it. People are going to continue investing. And due to... This is one of the massive side effects due to Modern Masters, Eternal Master, these master sets... Due to the heavy overprinting and the heavy reprints, due to the heavy reprints, investors are scared. They're, in, they're scared of investing in modern. They're scared of investing in Liliana's of the Veils or Jace the Mind Sculptors or cards like that. They're scared of it. And because they're scared due to the reprints, they're pushing all their money. They're selling out of modern. They're selling their modern cards and they're pushing all their value, all their money into the reserved list. And that's just driving prices higher and higher. That's the, uh, that's the unintended side effect for reprinting. Due to the heavy reprinting that people are scared, they're going to push their money into the reserve list and drive reserve lists higher and higher and higher. That's just a backlash. It's a backlash of the investors. They're scared. They're pushing their money into the reserve list. So the reserve list is here to stay. I just wanted to make this video because I saw a lot of people talking about like Rudy and how he made the price of Bazaar of Bad Dad jump up over a thousand dollars and how if there wasn't reserved list they should just take it away but I think you got to think of it as a question is it a players game is it an investment game wizard wants it to be a players game but the reserved list is an investment game and that's just my thought I would be love to hear what you think about the reserved list do you hate it do you love it do you think it's a necessary evil do you want your cards to be worth more in the future? Do you want them to slowly go down like technology, like the Wii? Post down. I'm just one guy. These are just my thoughts. If I'm completely wrong, tell me down in the comment section. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me I'm completely wrong. I'll take it. There's no problem with that. Please do not forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Posting new MTG content, new MTG videos every two days. Sometimes I sprinkle in some Hearthstone, maybe some Blizzard games, but it's mostly MTG. So why not subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, if you like what you hear. That's pretty much it. Bilish Kavava. Ow.